Hey folks, TJ here, back with another edition for Weekly Wrestling. Now this week I'm looking at a uh, somewhat recent event, and uh, by recent as of uh, la last spring, um, um, an event produced by Ring of Honor, actually. It's actually a super show. I think you all know what, what which direction I'm going with this, and of course I happen to have it. Right here. This. This is War of the Worlds, baby. Oh yes. I've been wanting to get this for a while, and you know what? I just want to let, let out right now an amazing, amazing show, actually. I highly recommend this to anyone, any Ring of Honor fan, any wrestling fan. You got and you should get this in your collection, okay? This joint promotional show just showcases some of the best talent from both Japan and Ring of Honor, okay? And say what you can say about, about Ring of Honor, okay? But let me tell you something, okay? Ring of Honor puts on some amazing stuff, okay? You don't need a flashy storyline to keep a show together, okay? You just need guys that know how to wrestle, that can just go to the ring and just tell a story in the ring. That tell, tells me it's a good show and a good company, okay? But anyway, aside from that, I'm going to get to the show, all right? Okay? I'm going to drive right into it, okay? Main event for the IWGP World Championship, the, the New Japan title. It was the, a triple threat match. It was AJ Styles... Rainmaker Kazuchiya Okada and Unbreakable Michael Elgin. Oh, yeah. What can I say about this main event? An amazing stuff. Literally a perfect showcase of these different styles. You know, the Japanese hard hitting style, the American hunting style, the, and of course they have Elgin's power, powerhouse kind of style. Mesh it all together. And what you get, you get an amazing bout with three different guys representing three different countries, actually. Yet, yeah, literally, yet. Yeah. Styles representing the United States, Elgin representing Canada, and, of course, Okada representing Japan. Amazing stuff. Enough said. Um, there's so many highlights I can probably think of this match, but you got to see this event, event just to see see what happens, actually. But anyway, to the undercard, um, actually, there was actually, that was one of five championships. Yes, five championships throughout this entire night, okay? Here they are, four championships. One was for the Ring of Honor World title. This was the match I was really looking forward to. It was the champion Adam Cole defending against Jushin Thunder Liger. Oh, yeah. Right there, you know how excited I, I am because Jushin Liger is an amazing, amazing athlete and a great legend, actually, okay? In fact, I met him a couple of years ago at a fan convention. It was really cool. He surprised, he surprised me because he spoke perfect English. That... That right there just just really took me by surprise. It was really cool. I, I got an autograph from him, and it was it was it was really cool actually. And what I find interesting is that he's facing off a guy literally half his age actually. And um, and of course I was listening to the commentary during this match, and I that and Korea pointed out an interesting fact actually. So what? Uh, well, spoilers. Um, uh, Jushin Li the Jushin Liger gimmick did not debut until the spring of 1989. Adam Cole nor myself. We're not even born yet. Holy hell. And all of a sudden, 25 years later, those two are competing over a world title. That is in interesting enough. It's just it's just cr crazy, but an amazing content nonetheless. Really, Lager put on such a good show, okay? Adam Cole, goal, he, he made him look so good. It was such an amazing match. Um, I don't want to give too much away. You got to see the match for yourself, okay? Literally, Lager is an amazing athlete and my hat's off to Adam Cole as well he's he's amazing ta young talent he's hungry hungry he's definitely got a huge huge future ahead of him okay anyway the other titles that were on the show it was one was for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship it was the Young Bucks representing Bullet Club taking on Red Dragon of Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly and interesting enough according to this they had UFC fighter Tom Waller in their corner interesting enough and of course some um, you got the young young bucks with their high flying um, uh, daredevil attitude, and you have Red Dragon with their you know their stoic MMA style style there. Of course, some made for a very very cool contest, a very hard hitting bout. Actually, I'm not gonna lie. And of course, I think I've said this in a previous video that um, uh, usually martial arts and pro wrestling don't mix, but when you have guys like uh, like Bobby Fish and Kyle Riley who kind of kind of, you know, training those styles. But I believe I've said before that, the, in my opinion, the three that perfected those styles were D Daniel Bryan, Davey Richards, and Egg Edwards. Uh, Fish and O'Reilly, they're they're getting to that echelon, but they're, but it was a good match nonetheless. Amazing stuff. Uh, got, definitely got to check out that title match. In my opinion, 
almost a show steal contest. But anyway, your tag team championship was on the line. It was the IWGP tag team titles. It was the champions, the the Bull Club, the art. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I just pointed that out. Yeah, two, the, the Bull Club owned two different uh, t- titles. You have Carl Anderson, Doc Yow's, the IWGP World Tag Team Champions, and then you have Young Bucks as the uh, um, Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. <laughs> That's interesting. But anyway, um, Anderson and Gallows defended the belts against the Briscoes. Interesting contest, actually, seeing the Briscoes face a team that pretty much, you know, just garnered international attention over in Japan, and amazing contest nonetheless, actually. <clears throat> then, uh, for the Ring of Honor World Television Championship, it was Jay Lethal defending the belt against Kushida, representing the Time Squares, actually, and, and actually a pretty good match, actually. Of course, uh, Lethal, Jay Lethal, you know, be, he's he's amazing, actually. Another young, hungry talent, you know, hit with his uh, amazing high flying style, his stu- his his style, and of course Kushida, who I'm rapidly starting to like because his gimmick is is a time tra- a time traveler with uh, Alex Shelley. Yeah, the time sports. I really like that ta- tag team, and that's another interesting thing is that Kushida actually comes out to the ring wearing the life preserver jacket that Marty McFly wears from Back to the Future. That's why I fell in love with and why I'm really. Falling in love with the team and especially Kushida, they it's a it's amazing stuff. But anyway, good good t- title bout. Um, uh, I thought it could have gone on a little longer. Longer, I felt it was a little rushed, but still, Kushida put up a good fight. Um, we thought put up a good fight. You guys see this match to believe me, right? But anyway, other than that, it's a pretty much a good show. A couple of matches on here, not too special. Tanahashi took on Bennett. Good match actually. Uh. Shinsuke Nakamura and Kevin Steen, another good contest. And uh, let's see, a couple of our tag belts. It was the decade of BJ Whitmer and Roderick Strong against Gato and Jado. And uh, Matt Taven, ACH, and Tommaso Ciampa taking on Takagi Watanabe and uh, the Forever Hogans of Kozlov and Romero. Good stuff, amazing stuff. Uh, it's literally from top to bottom, it's an amazing card, just literally showcasing. Both what both companies have to offer, and it's not enough. Enough said. I, like I said, you got to get this event, all right. And of course, it's a good good year to be a wrestling fan. That's all I'm, I'm going to tell you, all right. With that in mind, this gives my overall ring of nine out of ten, all right. That does it. Let me know what you think. Keep tuned here for more weekly wrestling, all right. Take care, folks.